This is the famed New York City, and in Grand Central Station, it acts as a hub to help us travel across the city and explore all the parts of the island. I'm Jose, and I invite you to the borough of Manhattan to experience the neighborhoods of this fast-paced city, starting in the northern end with Inwood and Fort George, a lesser-known area of Upper Manhattan that contains some of the biggest history in the Empire State. So let's go on tour and experience New York City. the five boroughs of New York City. Together, they make up one of the largest cities in the world. But the heart of New York City is the island of Manhattan, and this is the neighborhood of Inwood. We step out of the 215th Street Station to explore this hidden world in Upper Manhattan, a borough that contains close to 2 million residents. Inwood is one of the few neighborhoods in Manhattan that has an elevated train platform. On the street level, we walk around to begin learning about the residential buildings that surround the area. In this corner of the neighborhood, we can see the past and present of Inwood. Before Manhattan's famous grid came to life, it was mostly farmland, and Upper Manhattan was one of the last places to be remodeled into the concrete jungle. So this historic district reflects the homes of New York in the 1920s. Inwood, New York, an area that remained rural until the early 1900s. It was slow to experience the developmental rise like the other neighborhoods, and it wasn't until the extension of the trains to Upper Manhattan that it began to take shape the earliest designs of urban living spaces were similar to these homes from the 1920s and 1930s. But as the farmers began to sell off their lands, new residential complexes were constructed in the neighborhood. Here we see the modern housing, similar to many areas in Manhattan. Low-rise apartment buildings that were able to house the many new migrants coming to the growing city. Manhattan grew from 60,000 residents in the 1800s to 3.4 million by the turn of the century. In some of these buildings on a higher level, you can find steps that lead to main roads like Broadway down below. Manhattan is a borough that's densely populated from the big migration boom through Ellis Island. So when you get past the landmarks like the Empire State Building, you come across miles of residential apartment buildings, especially in northern Manhattan, where it's less touristic. To get from the top of the hill, dozens of Inwood residents take the 215th Street steps. It showcases the hills of Upper Manhattan, and this neighborhood happens to be one of the hilliest on the island. The steps are over 100 years old, dating back to when Broadway still had cobblestone streets. At this height, you get a wonderful view of the apartments and are able to see the above ground platform and frantic movement of New York City's busy streets. So right behind me, there's a 35 foot marble arch right in this tire shop. That used to be the entrance of a grand mansion right here in Inwood. It's supposed to replicate the arch in France. The streets of Inwood merge with the overhead platform as it becomes a part of the neighborhood's identity. It was in 1903 when the Inwood farmers first heard of the iron skeleton, the slang term for the overhead rail tracks. Inwood was the last undeveloped area of the borough and would be reimagined into a settled district, completing the magic that built a modern city. As we walk around the neighborhood, we move to higher grounds, taking in the full view of Inwood and exploring the history of Upper Manhattan. 
From the rooftops, we see all the activity on the streets below. Let's take a walk through Aisham Park, a park gifted to the city by the Aisham family. It was originally a summer estate and retirement home to William Aisham. Aisham made his way to becoming a vice president of Union Bank and the Bank of Metropolis. And after his passing, the land was converted to park grounds. As you walk around Inwood, you come across a small house in the middle of all the buildings. Between the 17 to 1800s, what defined northern Manhattan was the topography and rolling fields. The Dykeman Farmhouse is the last remaining farmhouse in all of Manhattan. Built by William Dykeman, this farmhouse once stretched 250 acres. The Dykeman Farmhouse is the last remaining piece of a New York City long forgotten, and neighborhoods transform from the sounds of nature to the alerts of sirens and screeches of train brakes. The natural landscape is still an important part of Inwood, making up a good portion of the neighborhood. The Inwood Hill Park takes up 196 acres of the area, filled with so many hidden secrets. On a ridge that rises 200 feet above the Hudson River is Inwood Hill Park, a 196-acre park that spans one mile between Dykeman Street to the very tip of the island. We see neighborhood residents playfully spending time with their pets at the Inwood Dog Park. As we walk down the hills of the park, we're greeted by forest. Inwood Hill Park has the last natural forest and contains the last salt marsh on the island of Manhattan. At this very site is a small monument with a historic meaning behind it. Peter Minuit, a Belgian-born merchant, went on to become the third governor of the New Netherland Territory, claimed by the Dutch East India Company. In present day, the territory comprised of parts from Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, and fully encompassed New Jersey, New York, Delaware, Massachusetts, and Connecticut. Peter Minuit met with the Lenape Native Americans, and legend goes that for $24 worth of trinkets, Peter Minuit purchased the island of Manhattan. And Peter Minuit made a grand deal in the purchase of the island, as it flourished to become one of the greatest cities on Earth. The park has one last hidden pathway, leading up to the Native American caves. The caves were used as summer camps by the Lenape Native Americans. They left behind pottery, axes, and many other artifacts as the arrival of Henry Hudson would forever change their way of life. At this point, I'm trying to uncover what's behind these Indian caves, because this is a rocky park. And a lot of northern Manhattan is very hilly. I wore boots because it's very slick. A lot of the wet leaves all over the place. So you gotta be careful coming down. But the view is immaculate from here. So let's talk upper Manhattan and its hills. As we head to the neighborhood of Fort George, we take this extensive road up Wadsworth Terrace. Some of the buildings are being held up by support beams as we go even higher to the Met Cloisters in Fort George. The buildings on Wadsworth Terrace seem like an illusional effect as the corners of the streets expand almost like a triangle and the roads branch out to other directions that follow a similar steepness, almost becoming a path of hypnosis and truly a tiring trail for the Washington Heights residents who go through this on a daily basis. The biggest attraction at Fort George are the Met Cloisters on Fort Tyrone Park, 
the Met cloisters are stylized to give an image of a European monastery sitting on a steep hill overlooking the neighborhood. The Met cloisters can be viewed as a scenic illustration with the massive Hudson River at its backside. The cloisters are part of the Metropolitan Museum of Art and with a ticket to the museum, you can also visit the Met on 5th Avenue. So let's enter the museum to be fascinated with the medieval works of art. So this beautiful French burgundy doorway made out of limestone it's supposed to be inspired by the first Christian kings of France. It's beautiful. Look at the entrance of this room. It's made out of iron. It's gorgeous, the detail. The detail within the door is something else. This is unlike anything you'd ever imagine in New York City. A museum stylized to evoke a European monistic life that showcases some of the medieval elements that became the history of Western Europe. And throughout the museum, we'll come across the four cloisters that act as a thematic centerpiece, like the tri-cloister. So as we peek out this window, this will be the Bonfon Cloister. And we head outside to the Bonfon Cloister and Gardens as we take in this beautiful piece of art. Both the Tri Cloister and Bonfon Cloister come from parts of French houses of worship with artifacts that span from the 12th century to the 16th century. So this is a larger cloister in the museum, the Cuxa Cloister. So the Cuxa Cloister is painted out of marble from Catalan. The Cuxa Cloister sits at the center of the museum with Spanish components of the Abbey of Saint Michel de Cuxa dating back to 878. And inside the museum's upper level, we cross through the Gothic halls where visitors observe the many images of the Holy Virgin Mary and Divine Infant. The Gothic Hall leads us to the lower level, to the tombs of the Gothic Chapel. The windows of the chapel are of Austrian history, while the tombs contain knights and effigies with a remarkable history going back hundreds of years. We see the delicate details of this bishop's robe as we tour the treasury in the lower level and can just fantasize about a time period that's become the inspiration for so many novellas of pop culture. As we head back to the entrance, we come across our final cloister of the tour, a cloister that brings an inspiration from the Roman Empire. So this is one of the cloisters of the museum, St. Gilhem's Cloister. This, this is spectacular. This was one of the earliest pieces of the museum, dating back to 804 AD and acquired in 1906. Rockefeller Jr. was a strong voice for this cloister's layout. I walk around the museum and see the visitors take in the beauty of the Fuente Dueña Chapel, the largest room in the museum built with pieces dating back to the 1100s. The center of the chapel contains a large fresco taken from the church of San Juan de Tredos and a hanging crucifixion that was created between 1100 to 1200 Spain.
So as you walk outside to the West Terrace, this is the type of view that awaits you. Now if I turn around here, the Hudson. From this height on Fort Tryon Park, we're able to see the neighboring state of New Jersey. The Hudson River is a pivotal part of the city, helping Manhattan connect to the rest of New York. And the impressionable George Washington Bridge brings together two states. The beauty of looking back at the past and experiencing the early days of Upper Manhattan. In this time capsule of vintage footage, we get a glimpse of Manhattan's yesteryears. I walk to the edges of Fort Tryon Park to observe the city from a broader perspective. From this view, the buildings look stunning and faintly in the distance, you can see the bustling traffic of this busy city. The park at Fort Tryon is an escape for the locals to experience a quiet space within the city, a park that feels as medieval as the Cloisters Museum. Fort Tryon is a 67-acre park extending from 192nd Street to Riverside Drive, and I walk up the park steps and join the final leaves of autumn as the colors shift to winter. On a spring or summer visit, we can see the beauty of the park's garden, and it remains as hilly as the neighborhood, as the visitors observe the park below. We see more residents enjoying the trails of the park, with some areas feeling like an entrance to a mansion. And I find a bench to sit back as I spot the Billings Arcade at the lower grounds of the park. So my curious mind takes a walk through the spectacular archway. Fort Tryon is another park that was modeled by the Olmsted brothers and at one time served as an estate for Cornelius Billings, a famous philanthropist and industrial tycoon. Rockefeller purchased the grounds of the estate and eventually gave the land to the city. In turn, the city created this marvelous viewpoint and escape for the Inwood residents, where the Hudson looks endless, and the grounds of Fort Tryon still feel as if the Battle of Fort Washington were taking place. city is full of so much mystery and wonder, serving as a giant textbook of American history, and the citizens become the words of the chapter, while the architecture turns the pages into paintings. This is the beauty of the Big Apple. Upper Manhattan feels like a completely different part of the city, which resembles more of upstate New York than lower Manhattan. A fascinating area which kept the history of an island that experienced natural wonders, war, and farmland blended with an urban development that becomes the biography of the city. I'm Jose, and if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like and share. 
If you want to see more great American stories, please subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay up to date with the tour. Until next time.